Chris Mitchell. Uh, I, I, I see the advanced team has already been here. Uh, I was asked by Yes Prop 32 to go around the state talking about it, partially because uh, I was a union leader. Uh, Chris, yes. I have one question. Yep. Are you for or against 32? Well, you've got to find out. Uh, the uh, union I was uh, a leader in was the Screen Actors Guild, and as national first vice president, I was number two person running a national union of over 74,000 members. I'd like to tell you a little story about something that happened that, there that gave me an insight into unions and a, a kind of an overall opinion of unions. 1988, I got a call from Charlton Heston. He said, Chris, I got a call from Ronnie. That's who uh, Charlton Heston called uh, President Reagan. He said, I got a call from Ronnie, and he said that we have an opportunity at the Department of Labor. They're rewriting their guidelines to make a contract with the Department of Labor for the Screen Actors Guild to do all government films. Now, you have to understand two different things. One, 1988, the Screen Actors Guild, one-third of our members earned zero a year. One-third of our members earned less than 5000 a year. Now, the remaining third, less than 800 or roughly 1%, earn more than $25,000 a year. The other thing you need to understand is a $3 billion a year industry was about three times bigger than Hollywood. A, a State Department person is going to Ukraine to a state dinner. They watch a film on etiquette at a state dinner in the Ukraine that had been done by Screen Actors Guild actors. They've done an M1 or an M16 done by a Screen Actors Guild actor. It would have been a huge contract. So I called for a joint meeting with the New York and, and the, the Hollywood uh, boards and pitched the case. They approved it and they sent Charlton Heston and myself to Washington. We had dinner and the next day Chuck and I went, Chuck is what I call Charlton Heston. Uh, Chuck and I went to talk to uh, the Secretary of Labor McLaughlin and she was very precise and the medium was very brief. She said, we cannot make a contract with a union, a private union. However, if you can send us a letter telling us that you're not a union, you are in fact a guild or an association, we can do the contract. And she said, the way you do that is you point out that one, you do not have a hiring hall, and two, you do not have an apprentice program. Told us how to do it. Go back to Los Angeles, we called another joint meeting, I laid out what we had to do, they voted against it. The reason why they voted against it is because if Heston and I had gotten this through and it hit the trade papers that we had, we had gotten this government contract, I would have been the next president of the Screen Actors Guild. And the insight that gave me was that union leaders have two main priorities. One is personal power within the union, and two, an extension of that personal power, personal power through the union by making it the most powerful union they can. Everything else is secondary to feeding those two priorities. Now, to get to Prop 32, there's something that happened fairly recently that shows why we need this proposition. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, heard about the, the pedophile problem they had in the LA school district. When they tried to get rid of the main offender of this, they found that the CTA, California Teachers Association contract, put so many restrictions on getting rid of a CTA teacher but it's going to take over three and a half years to get rid of the teacher. They could suspend him, but they had to pay him the entire time. So they went to Sacramento and asked if they could do something. The Senate acted very quickly, bipartisan. They passed Senate Bill 1530, which would fast track being able to get rid of teachers within the school system who were dangerous pedophiles with drugs or physical abuse. They could get them out almost immediately. Sailed through the Senate, bipartisan. Both sides, everybody supported it. Got to the assembly, but by this time, the California Teachers Association found out about it. They came out very strongly against it. I guess pedophile is bad unless it's a CTA teacher doing it. They had a vote at the committee, went into committee at the assembly, 11 member committee, five Republicans, six Democrats. They did a six votes to put it to the floor for a vote to pass in the assembly. It was defeated because two Democrats voted against it, four Democrats abstained. Of those six, they by far out-received donations from teaching associations in the state. Our own assemblyman down in Santa Barbara, Doss Williams, received nearly $30,000 from the California Teachers Association. He has since written a check 
for $7,800 to no on Prop 32 as a payback. Prop 32 does three things. First thing it does is it puts a firewall between unions and corporations from doing direct donations to candidates, state and local. I say corporations, AT&T donates to every single member of the Assembly and Senate in Sacramento. Every single member gets a donation from AT&T. They got all bets covered. So <laughs> donations are as bad as the unions. So it puts this firewall, they cannot make these direct donations. Second thing it does is a contractor cannot donate directly to a state or local official who has anything to do with their contract. And the third thing it does, it stops the automatic withdrawal from payroll of donations <coughs> to political purposes. Every single uh, union member and every single person working in a corporation must sign a yearly release telling that corporation or that union that they can, in fact, withdraw from their payroll these, these donations. The, one of the big com the arguments against this is going to free up billionaires to have access to political power. Well, what they're talking about is independent expenditure, which is one, guaranteed by the First Amendment, and two, ratified by the U.S. Supreme Court. Second thing that you have to be aware of is that, yes, on Prop 32, has raised $3 million. So I don't know where all, the, where all these billionaires who are going to get politically powerful are, are hiding out. No one Prop 32 has raised over $35 million. Okay. Biggest single contributor? Union. California Teachers Association of more than $16 million. That should pretty much tell you all about it. Any questions? Well, the fact that they can outspend us 11 to 1, we've got to spread the word, use the internet, do everything we can. We do have some signs of door hangers and stuff coming up. Uh, Bryce told me that they should be here within the week, and I'll get them up here as soon as I can. But uh, you yeah, know, we have our work cut out to uh, to get this through. Thank you very much. Oh, question. question? Yes. Yeah, are you writing for the twenty fourth congressional? Uh, no, because uh, of the way Abel did the the uh, open primary, the first two elected uh, in the primary are the only two who are on the ballot, and it excludes it excludes write-ins. Um, well, it basically a write-in becomes a, a no vote. Right. right, but I think you can spoil the actual ballot. That I, that I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that's. Don't, do, don't write yeah. anything in. I, I I heard. In fact, I yeah. I just heard today that a a phone poll was taken in Lompoc of Republicans, and three of every ten Republicans asked said they're not going to vote for Abel. Yeah. When he spoke down in. Uh, in Santa Barbara at Fest Parkers, they had, I forget the woman's name, who's running for U.S. Senate. Uh, Abel yeah, was I, there. Yeah, caps. Yes. She was there. Abel was there. Uh, Mike Stoker was there. And Rob was there, who's running for Senate down in our area. They all got up and spoke. When Abel got up and spoke, and Harris started asking him questions, and he was starting to answer, he was heckled and booed. So there is a lot of resistance throughout the 24th so District close, against yeah. Abel. Uh, I, I saw him at a... Uh, Women's Federated in Tascadero about 10 days ago, and he asked me if I would endorse him. And he's, he's asked me that numerous times. And I explained to him, and I'll say it again, it's on my website too. I said, Abel, I ran on specific conservative political principles, principles which you do not share. And because of that, I cannot support you. I, I won't vote for Lois Caps because she doesn't share them either. The main difference between Abel and Lois, is that Abel votes against his party and Lois votes with hers. <laughs> That's about the only difference. Same votes. Yeah. I just verified the information that you said in regards to the California Teachers Association. It's now up to 17. Oh, those little rascals. Yeah, up to 17. <laughs> she said uh, TTA has now donated, donated over $17 million to uh, no on 32. Chris, yeah. you're not getting out of politics, so my Oh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> One of the reasons why I'm doing this, there's a gentleman named Howard Kalugian. He was a state assemblyman. Um, he now is CEO of the Tea Party Express. They're the ones who got Murdoch elected in Indiana against Luger. And he called me about three days before the primary and said that he was sorry. I had just come up on the radar. But uh, if Abel falls flat in November, 
they want to support me for running in 2014 for Congress. And one of the reasons why I'm going around the state for Prop 32 is he wants me to get a statewide identification because he feels that Boxer is going to retire in 2016 and he would like to push me to run for U.S. Senate. Yeah. So, <laughs> off the battle is still in the world. When you say if he runs flat, huh? that means that he mean, doesn't it, get it? He doesn't get it. Because if he gets it... If he gets it, it's going to take dynamite to get him out of there. Yeah. My understanding is, in order for, in order for a candidate to unseat an incumbent, especially if he's only been in there for one term, it's going to be in excess of a million dollars in... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In also, I, I had heard before this, this cycle that Lois didn't want to run this time. She wanted to retire, and, and the Democrat Party got her to run because they said, we really need you with the di redistricting. An incumbent has more chance of getting in in a new district than an open seat. 